Story one. I was working the night shift in an old skiff that was originally built back in the 50s. I was starting to feel sleepy, so I went for a walk to wake myself up and ended up getting lost in the maze of underground tunnels, finding myself in a part of the complex that hadn't been used in decades. Everything looked like it was just left there and forgotten one day, eerily frozen in time. I was extremely tired and stressed out from work, and that didn't help me to be able to rationally retrace my steps. Everything around me seemed like something was hiding in the shadows and watching me. It took a long time, but I finally made it back to my position and didn't tell anyone what happened. Luckily, it was the night shift and no one noticed I was gone. A year later, we got a new guy and in the middle of the night shift, he got up and went for a walk. A couple of hours later, he came back looking like he'd seen a ghost. I just gave him a knowing nod and he knew I knew exactly what he had just gone through. Story two. As a Marine, I used to have the graveyard patrol shift at the Beirut Bombing Memorial. Part of the memorial is dedicated to a veteran cemetery. Oddly enough, I never got freaked out being completely alone in a remote cemetery in the middle of the night surrounded by dense woods on all sides. It was actually kind of peaceful, to be honest. However, one night I was patrolling near the perimeter fence where some of the oldest headstones are when I heard the sound of a woman humming. I followed the sound and noticed a light glowing through the vines and brush of a large tree. As I approached, I could feel my hair beginning to lift as if there was an electric current in the air. I pushed aside the brush and what I saw nearly took my breath away. It was an old weathered headstone with a large cross etched into the marble. Only the cross was glowing a bright vivid blue like a neon bulb. The humming was also suddenly much louder and had a weird plurality to it like it was coming from hundreds of voices at once. Needless to say, I freaked the fuck out. I screamed like a scared little girl and sprinted back to the parking lot. I radioed the guard who was supposed to relieve me and forced him to come early, then spent the rest of my shift in the cab of his truck. I don't think he believed me, but he stayed in his truck and didn't go out on patrol until the sun was fully up. A few days later, I worked up the nerve to return to the grave, during the day of course. As I suspected, in the light of day, it was a completely mundane headstone. There was no name, only the aforementioned cross. I ran my hands over the stone and checked to see if maybe there was some sort of hidden light source or solar panel, but no, it was just plain, solid, unremarkable stone. The humming was gone too. I eventually returned to my normal shift, but never again experienced anything out of the ordinary. I never learned whose grave that was either, but I find myself thinking about it from time to time. It certainly sounds absurd when I say it out loud, and I suppose it could have been a hallucination or a trick of my tired brain, but I don't believe it was. I think it was real, a ghost or spirit of some sort, but I, I don't think it was malevolent at all. Story three. I was by myself in the engine room of a submarine on the mid-watch, just a newly reported sailor trying to find equipment so I could display knowledge to one of the watchstanders. There are several bays in engine room lower level with narrow passages that pass through the center. I came down one of the ladders and I swore I saw someone walk across the ship about 15 feet in front of me. I could hear his footsteps as he walked around a corner and out of sight. Three problems. One, he was wearing utilities, an older light blue blouse and dark navy slacks. Nobody had utilities anymore. They had been phased out three years earlier. Two, there was only one other person awake in the engine room that late at night, and he was standing at the top of the ladder behind me, waiting for me to come back up with an answer to his question. Three, he wasn't there. I wrote it off as sleep deprivation, but I'll admit it shook me for a while. Fast forward to four months later, I had gone out to sea with another submarine of the same type. While I was there, I met a sailor who had previously served on my ship. After a few weeks of standing watch with him, he told me a story of a sailor who had committed suicide while on watch when he served on my ship almost a decade earlier, in engine room lower level, in his utilities. I wish I could have gotten a picture of the look on my face. I'm sure it was the definition of disbelief. Story four, my dad's stories. He served in the Taiwanese Marines as a drill sergeant. Much of the ground in Taiwan saw violence under occupation and it was rumored his base was built on or near a mass grave. Needless to say, he's had a few paranormal stories. He had a guy report to him in the morning, exhausted but frazzled. The night before, he had been on guard duty, overlooking the firing range. The targets on the range were a mix of clay and wood figures, 
cut and drawn to look like an enemy soldier aiming a rifle at you. According to the guard, when he'd been bored out of his mind staring out over the range, he saw clear as day one of the clay soldiers wearily lay down his rifle and exclaim, Damn, I'm tired. The guard said he passed out from fright. During the evening, when training was over, the sergeants for the most part had the time to themselves. My dad liked to go snake hunting during dusk when the heat was rising from the ground and the snakes came out of their holes. So one evening, he sets out carrying a bag, a nice long stick, and a flashlight. As he was making his way across the field, zigzagging in a search pattern, he found himself getting closer and closer to an old decrepit outhouse that had been abandoned as it was too far from the main base. As he got within a few yards of it, he was hit with a sudden feeling of apprehension. Something told him going near the outhouse was a bad idea. At that moment, his flashlight aimed right at the construct went out. He fiddled with the battery, smacked it, thought, fuck, better get a new battery, and turned around to head back. The moment he turned and faced the main base, the flashlight flickered back on. Great, time to keep hunting. The moment he turned to face the outhouse, it flickered off again. Face the base, it flickered on. He did this two or three times, got the message, verbally apologized for intruding, turned, and walked calmly back to base. The base itself was surrounded by forest and mountains, the natural terrain of Taiwan. One day, a soldier was reported missing. As the day went on, it was clear that he'd either deserted or was in serious trouble. A manhunt slash rescue team was organized, and most of the base was out searching for the guy as the rain started to come in. As night fell, they called it off and got ready to try again tomorrow. They found him in the morning, huddled in a wet, dark cave, scared speechless and out of his mind. No one was sure what he saw to cause him to freak out, and they never found out. They shipped the guy out soon afterward. Finally, during one of his years on the base, it was hit by a huge typhoon. Typhoons are pretty regular in Taiwan, especially during the summer, but this one was going to set records. Everyone hunkered down and reinforced the base as best they could, and it held well. And after days of relentless rain and wind, they emerged to survey the damage. One of the trees on base had been hundreds of years old. It sat on a hill and overlooked the base, and so had been the site of a Buddhist shrine set at its roots. Now the roots twisted and turned into the air. The storm had torn the tree from the ground, and yet the shrine itself was untouched. Even the red silk covering, with nothing weighing it down, hadn't moved an inch despite the winds that had finally torn the great tree from its hill after hundreds of years. The soldiers took this as a sign that despite whatever would be thrown against them, their spirit would remain strong and unmoved. Story five, I have to preface this to give context and I'm tired and on my phone, so this may be messy and kind of long, so I apologize. At the time I was working nights in the munitions storage area, which is fenced off with barbed wire. The whole area is pretty spread out with multiple buildings and large enough that you generally drove around to get to other buildings. Due to the nature of the job, the buildings are spread out with clear space between them. Anyways, the only people in the bomb dump on this night are the roughly eight or so of us in my shop and one guy in control that night. He was in another building and we had a direct line to him on what we called the bat phone, relevant later. This is summer in SC in about two or 3 a.m. So the air was warm and very still. No breeze at all, and we had the break room door open while we watched a movie. We were on flight line support standby, and nothing was going on. Now the rumor was the small building we worked out of had been built by German POWs during the war, and I know for a fact that there were some there back then. It was small, with the main break room, a small dispatch office through a doorway, and a couple of offices off of that one. There were two doors, one in the break room, and one on the same side of the building in the dispatch office, roughly 20, 30 feet away from each other. Both had push bars on the inside, but only the break room door could be opened from the outside as the dispatch door's external latch was busted and only the internal bar worked. Well, all of us, minus the guy locked down in the control building for security, are in the break room when suddenly Kathunk loud as shit from the dispatch door in the next room. It was like someone was rushing through slammed the push bar and the door swung open, then swung back shut after a couple of seconds with a slam. We all look at each other like, what the fuck? And start to check it out. 
We had mag lights in our crew books, so a few guys grab them and sweep around the building from both directions. Another guy calls the controller on the bat phone, who picked up and denied that he was fucking with us. There was no way he could have messed with us and made it back to his phone in time, let alone done it without being seen or heard. Anyone with experience knows how sound carries at 3 a.m. in the SC summer. You could hear the beeps from code keys being pressed hundreds of yards away. No joke. No way he hoofed it back to his building anywhere near fast enough, gone through the halls, punched in his code, and got to the phone in time. But the shit that got me was that damn bar. The door simply did not open from the outside, and we all heard that bar get pushed in hard. The door swung open, hang there for a couple of seconds, then shut. And there was no breeze, and had there been, it would have blown past the U.S. sitting in front of the only other door. Fucking weird. As an aside, there would be random times that I would go to pick up a trailer or something behind one of the other shops at the far end of the bomb dump. And as soon as I stepped out of my truck to do my inventory, I would get a super bad vibe. I'm talking the heebie-jeebies like no other. And as best I can describe it, it felt like something was right above and behind me and just hated me being there, just seething anger, rage, and hate, and it wouldn't go away until about 15 minutes after driving away from that building. One night, another driver who had arrived there shortly before I had for a trailer asked if I had a weird feeling there, which sure as shit I did. So I know at least once someone else corroborated it. All of this was on mid-shift, which was 11, 7.30 a.m. I heard a few other people's stories about weird shit that would happen at night, but since they aren't my stories, I can't vouch for their veracity. The only other thing that happened to me there was I swear I caught the clear silhouette of a guy walking in an open field between igloos. As I turned to punch my gate coat in, in the corner of my eye, I distinctly caught the motion of two legs and an arm sticking out, like someone mid-stride. When I turned back, it was just an empty field. That one could have just been my mind playing a trick, but man, that place could be fucking creepy. It's been damn near 15 years, but still gives me chills to think about. Story six. I was a camp counselor for a summer camp outside of Boston, MA, one year. Our camp took a field trip to George's Island on Boston Harbor to visit old Fort Warren. Fort Warren was primarily used as a Confederate prison during the Civil War. Anywho, this place has loads of dark and damp corridors and is just filled with creepy vibes. I loved it. It was a hot and sunny July day, and our tour guide took us down through a passage that was completely and utterly pitch black. These conditions lasted for maybe 100 on feet or so. My group was too young to be left unsupervised, so we had to tie them together and follow a single file against the granite wall. The National Park Rangers who were giving the tour were playing jokes on the kids and scaring them throughout. Lighthearted jokes, nothing to what the fuck. Our kids were spooked but enjoyed it. Now comes the good shit. I was 15, so I was a junior counselor. Juniors got all the grunt work of summer camp life, haha. Ha, so my senior counselor says to go back through the pass and get the next group, a group of older kids, and tell them to come through since our little ones were clear. I was not digging that idea, but I had no choice. So I begin to briskly walk down the black corridor. You had to take a corner at both ends to exit this stretch. So for most of the corridor, you are in complete darkness. I could finally see the faint glow of the daylight at the far end, and right when I felt relieved, a person crossed the light from right to left very quickly. It was a smaller outline of a person, so I instantly thought it was an older kid from our camp. Hey, who is that? Group seven or eight? No answer. No sound of walking. Nothing. The creepy part is that the way the shadow moved to the left would put them right up against the granite wall. So I got instantly sketched out that someone was about to scare the shit out of me. So I veered further right of the corridor to avoid the scare, still convinced that one of my campers was going to jump scare me. I sloshed through some puddles and almost lost my footing. So I used the right wall of the corridor for support. I get to about the spot where I think the person is lying in wait and almost fall because there is a doorway on the right side and all my weight was thrown through it since I was using the wall for support and guidance in the dark. Now I'm in the doorway for this massive chamber, still pitch black and musty, but I can tell it's huge just from the echoes. I get this insanely, I should not be here feeling, 
and bolt down the corridor to the end of the darkness and into the courtyard where the next three groups have assembled. I'm out of breath, shoes soaked and my shirt dirty from rubbing on the walls. My other counselors are all looking at me like I'm nuts as I'm asking if any of the kids were in there. None of them were. They were all accounted for. They even told me that no one had gone in after my group since they were there the whole time waiting for me to come to get them. A few minutes later, one of the park rangers came through the tunnel and I ran up to him to ask him if he or another ranger was in there either to scare us kids or for safety purposes. He looks at me and instantly asks if I heard anything. I say no, but I am 100% sure I saw someone cross my path from that doorway that leads from that big ass chamber room. He proceeds to tell me that for the most part, his crew avoids that hallway due to hearing the voice of the lady in black and that none of his men were in there. So back through the darkness we go, though this time we have like 40 of our older, 11 to 13 year olds kids running up and down the corridor hooting and hollering trying to scare everyone one of them discovered the big chamber room and soon they are all in there exploring the rangers were explaining to the groups what the room and corridors main purpose was during the civil war but i noped out of there fast as i could and rejoined my young campers on the other side i have no idea what it was down in the darkness but I'm deadly positive it was a woman's silhouette crossing my path in the depths of that awesome old fort. I've typed too long of a novel, but Google Fort Warren and the Ghost of the Lady in Black shouldn't be too hard to find on there. 10 out of 10 would recommend going to George's Island. Story seven, I got a few. I grew up in an old Victorian era boarding house in Iva, South Carolina. Everything about that town, that house and its surrounding area is just bug fuck creepy. We saw and felt all kinds of weirdness there, but that's only the beginning of my experiences. Hot spots, cold spots, apparitions of a man who looked like he was dressed in a suit and fedora, who was always with a young woman who was wearing a dress. Like an old school teacher from when the house was used as a boarding house and the ghosts of people that had been lynched from an old pecan tree in my backyard. I'm used to seeing some fucked up shit by this point, and that's only part of it. Fast forward to 2014, Enlisted in the U.S. Navy, got assigned T-Aid to USS Sterrett in between my A and C schools. I was coming back to the ship one night, and I see somebody aloft. That's not right. Nobody's supposed to be aloft at night, but somebody probably got an okay for it somewhere, so whatever. I see them walking around, then I get to the brow and look up, but don't see anybody. Oh, guess they went inside already. Didn't think anything about it. The next morning, we got underway. I went up to the smoke deck late one night on that underway, and on my way there, I see the upper half of a guy's face and could see coveralls with his second-class crows visible through the porthole window on one of the airlock doors that you go through to go outside. I make eye contact and shuffle over to let him in. He shuffled over too. Okay, I'll open it, guy, whatever. I open it, look around, and don't see him. Ah, he probably went over for another cigarette. I climb up there and I see some people in the dark, faces occasionally lit by the cherry from their cigarettes. But I don't see the guy. I ask if anybody saw somebody come up here because there was a guy that was about to hop through the airlock, but didn't. I just want to make sure that he's okay, you know? Silence then. You saw him, huh? Yeah, dipshit, that's why I asked. Is that guy up here or what? Do we need to call away man overboard? No, he's dead. Uh, maybe not if we turn the fuck around. No, I mean he hung himself. Really? No shit. Yeah, he was a CTR2 that got into a love triangle that went bad. He couldn't deal, so, hey, actually come over here under this light. Okay. Look up. This light was what he hung himself from. Sometimes you can see him walking around up there at night, and you'll feel a cold spot right here. Fuck me. Anything else I ought to know? Yeah, let me show you Andrew Sterrett's sword. It'll always shock you through the case, no matter how many times you touch it, or if you touch some metal beforehand. Fucking cool, dude. Yeah, apparently he killed a kid with it or something. Yeesh. Oh, and you're a sonar tech, right? Yeah, man. I'm in RDiv right now, but yeah. Okay, go ask Chief Moon about the skid. I think she's in sonar right now anyway. Okay, I'll bite. I head back in and get down to sonar control. Chief Moon was there, and I asked her about the skid. Oh, hell no! That place freaks me the fuck out. Okay, but why? What's the story? I gotta know now. Well, I went down there one time to get pressure readings because I was an STG one at the time and I was on duty. I saw a guy standing in the corner, back facing the ladder. 
I asked if he was okay and he didn't reply, so I fucking booked. Fuck that shit. I don't ever go down there at night. Yeah, but was it just somebody fucking with you? It sure as shit wasn't anybody that I recognized at all. So you tell me. Ooh, probably not. Yeah, and that's why I stay the fuck out of there. I left after a bit and figured that I'd check up on the skid anyway, just to see for myself. I got down there, and when I touched the hatch, I felt the same weirdness as when I was a kid. I went in anyway, cut on the light and didn't see anything, but still felt that something was off. Everybody else that I asked said that it's creepy down there and that they don't go anywhere near the skid unless they have to. Anyway, that are a few things that I saw out there. My old ship, USS Princeton, chased a UFO one time off the coast of Baja, and I saw some sort of submerged disc-like thing on sonar once. That, and any time that we'd go over shipwrecks, I would get a weird feeling out on the smoke deck. Anyway, that's enough for now. I gotta get back to work.